Hey guys, welcome back, and I'm here to talk to you about ball pythons, the pet rock. Hey guys, this is Bo, and he is doing great now. We got him back in October at Tinley, and if you remember correctly, he was essentially acting like a pet rock. He'd ball up, sit in your hand, and he did not care to be held much. But with a little work over the last several months, he is doing great now. So today I'm here to show you the different temperaments you may find in ball pythons that you may purchase as pets or as breeders and to show you how it can change and how things can improve. So this girl, you may have seen her on Instagram this week. This is Jasmine. She's our golden eye blood python and she's het T negative albino or pos hat T negative albino. She is a proof that this isn't just going to be a case or lesson in ball pythons. She is also one that we got and she would constantly strike or bite me, bite my hands. And I every time I held her, I'd leave bleeding. And I'm still a little gun shy, as you can see. <laughs> she's still skittish. I mean, she's not perfect but she has gotten much better. I think I've talked to you guys about it before on this channel. Through working with her daily or weekly or frequently, some kind of frequency in holding her, handling her, she has gotten much better. Another factor that went into her improvement was her husbandry. So when I first got her, I had her in a too large of an enclosure and she was stressed out. I gave her hides, she didn't really use the hides. She'd bury herself in the substrate. The breeder I got her from, Juggernaut Reptiles, at the Tinley Show suggested, hey, move her down to a smaller size and maybe lower her hotspot. I had her temperature about a degree or two, maybe too high. Through talking to the breeder who produced her, followed his advice, and she changed immediately. It was like night and day. She felt more comfortable in her enclosure. She stopped striking when you tried to pick her up, so I was able to pick her up now without a hook. You can see we've gotten to this point. Like I said, not perfect. Still a little, I guess you'd say, cautious of her because she does still strike from time to time if she gets spooked or if she is uneasy. But she is markedly better. And she's beautiful. Just give you a little close up of her. If you have time, go over to Instagram, check out the picture I posted over the other day. She's getting big. We're gonna have to get her a boyfriend soon. So for our first ball python, I have Bane. And Bane is not one who is a fan of being handled. He will pretty much go into a ball. And we've been working with Bane for, I'd say about a year and a half now we've had him. Every once in a great while you'll get that. I have heard horror stories of ball pythons that are just mean and strike all the time. Kind of how I described Jasmine, the blood python earlier. But he's gotten well enough so he will come out of his ball now, as you can see. He'll stick his head out, but that's about it. He's not gonna be like some of the other examples I show you. So he's defensive. Usually a snake is uncomfortable. There's something wrong with the husbandry, something wrong with temps, humidity, substrate, the enclosure size, or how much cover they have to where they feel stressed out and feel they have to defend themselves when you go to handle them. So it's important you kind of Try one factor at a time to pinpoint what the issue is. And once you get that figured out, then you can fix it and remedy it. And then you can begin building a relationship with that animal, handling it on a regular basis. So this girl, I'd say is a little more skittish than either snake I showed you. She's more of the type that's like a corn snake or a bull snake, where if you handle them, they're gonna just kinda try to get away from you. They don't necessarily get defensive, they're not gonna bite at you but they they kind of want to get away you can see she's head shy if I touch at her head here around her head she she definitely backs up and you've probably if you've watched this channel you've probably seen Matilda that's who this is somebody who couldn't get her to eat gave her to us and he, she was striking at him and she's turned out to be a great snake for us and she is begun pairing this year with Squilliam so she's doing good you can see I, I handle her she's doing fairly well. She's 
definitely cautious of me. Maybe not the most trusting. She's fine as far as it goes. Like I would feel good about if I was to sell her, selling her to a potential customer as a pet because I know she's not gonna bite them. I know she's used to being handled. She tolerates being handled, I guess you'd say. I don't know that she loves it. I don't know that she hates it. And of course she's trying to prove me wrong here. She's being very curious and exploratory, but that's just how it always goes. This is Aurora. She is a female, full grown, pat, super pastel at sunset. And she's been pairing this year with for us. We just got her as an adult, I'd say. She was about 1600 grams when we got her in September of last year. I wouldn't say she's been handled as much. She's been paired, she's been potentially gravid, so we haven't handled her as much. But you can see she's definitely one of our more skittish. Like she wants to get away. She's not real fond of me handling her. She's just not trusting of us yet. You can kind of see how, we're, how she's positioned. Her head is just kind of tucked under. Now she's coming out of her shell a little bit. She's one that we had to and still have to work with, I'd say. And a lot of that's because we didn't have her as a hatchling. So she's one that you can say is going to be less warm with us, I guess you'd say, because she just doesn't know us as well. She didn't, We haven't built that trust with her yet. So it's something we, we definitely need to work on with her. This is Beatrice, and she's gonna be in opposition to what we've showed you so far. She is a snake. If you've watched this channel, I guarantee you've seen me holding her in intros or while I speak, and she just loves being handled. I will hold her quite frequently, hang out with her on the couch while much the movie she'll sit on my lap periscope kind of explore around me she's one that if i open her enclosure she is going to poke her head out and want to see what's going on in fact a lot of times if i'm cleaning waters in the room or cleaning tubs i will just slightly pull her tub open let her kind of just poke around and nose around and look around she she seems to love it i don't obviously don't know what she's feeling but she's not like some others where you will see them kind of retreat to the back of their tub and hide she doesn't really want to hide she kind of wants to get out and explore and you can kind of see that in how she acts when i just hold her she's very inquisitive she moves around. She is a snake that we got from Canova, and she is a fire and she at Desert Ghost. And she is probably one of my favorite snakes that we have, just because she is just so much fun to handle. She's one that we've brought to shows previously to let kids handle her. And she does, she just does great. Like she is a, a great pet ball python. This is the ideal, this is what you want. So we'll do a quick rapid fire to show you a couple other species of snakes and show you how handling behaviors can be curved. Milk snakes, from what I was told when I started researching getting one, like Scarlet here, was that they were not very handleable, they didn't care to be handles, but this girl, because my kids, myself, we handled her frequently, she, she's a joy. I mean, I she's another one that I will take out and handle frequently. She'll look around, she's a little curious, but for the most part, she will just wrap around my hand, my fingers, and chill there and kind of explore a small area around where she's at. And she seems to tolerate it very well, is how I'll put it. So we've got Maddie Ross, the bull snake. And bull snakes are notoriously hissy and just do not want to be held. In fact, my daughter named her Maddie Ross because bull snakes always seem mad. She is another one who's a, a joy to be handled. I mean, for a bull snake. She is hypo. We got her from Scott's Great Snakes at Tinley a few years back. She's just a pet, but she is one of our favorites. In fact, she is one we take to shows and we let people feel the difference between her keeled scales and what other snakes might feel like. And by all accounts from everything I've seen, even with some of Snake Discovery's bull snakes, that she is just, she is one that we have handled since she was a hatchling, since we got her pretty frequently, and she tolerates it very, very well. She does awesome at the shows, even, even with multiple people handling her and petting her. All right, guys, and the last one I wanted to show you 
African house snakes. So these guys, they're pretty, pretty handleable, I'd say. Very handleable. You can see Lucifer here. He's our largest male, probably our largest house snake. And he was the father of the clutch we hatched earlier this year. And he is one that is food aggressive, I guess you'd say. If I open up the tub and there's a smell of food in the room, he's gonna come out teeth first. It doesn't mean he's aggressive. He just understands that when that tub opens and he has that scent in the air, he is going to eat. So he's looking for food and he has to strike quickly because in the wild, prey will get away. But these guys, again, they don't come out as handleable. And I'll show you one of his babies here in a second as proof of that. Over time, handling him regularly, he's gotten to the point where he, and again, I'll say tolerates it very, very well. He does well, unless you smell like a mouse, and then he's gonna bite you. This guy is proving me wrong, but typically when I try to grab him, he tries to get away. And I don't know if this is the guy, this is one of the babies. And by the way, if you're interested in house snakes at all, we had this clutch. We'll be posting some probably very soon for sale. Out of this clutch, we had a T-positive albino, who you see here. We had a hypo and we had a normal. I know the normal will be going up for sale for sure. Not sure about the other two yet. Waiting on a couple more clutches here, hopefully soon in the next couple months make that decision but i will post those on instagram first i've already posted a few pictures and videos of them so please follow us there if you like this video please like subscribe hit that notification bell if you have a snake that is defensive when you first get it as a pet one of the key ingredients to fixing the problem is handling that snake it may take getting them out with a hook so you don't get bit but ultimately you want to touch them even if you're not picking them up if you have to use gloves but you want to get them used to being handled early on and often um, it starts with short periods of time 10-15 seconds at a time maybe you don't bring them far from their cage and then slowly progress away from that to build that relationship but it can be done and I'd love to see more people do that rather than just give up on a pet snake because they can be very rewarding pets. Once again, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notifications when we upload new videos. Check us out on our other socials. They're down in the description and we will see you on the next one. Bye.